Hey, Mike. Hey, Alex. How's it going? Good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm excited for a new year of cool House of Bob stuff. I'm excited for a new year of cool Tales of Bob stuff. Oh, well, that's kind of you to say. Well, if we want to do more cool stuff in 2024, what kind of cool stuff should we do, Alex? I don't know. I feel like maybe we should like set a New Year's resolution to do different cool stuff with our Patreon. Oh, well, how would we decide what to do? Um, that's a good question. Should we like break the fourth wall and ask listeners what they would want to see and hear in the Patreon? Oh, oh hi, listeners. I didn't see you sitting there, listeners. How are you? <laughs> I didn't know you were there. <laughs> well, it's so great to see you. Wow. Wow, you snuck right up on us. Man, I mean, they're very quiet. Yes, they're very quiet listeners, but we want them to be loud, I think. Yeah. Maybe they could provide us with some feedback. They could. About what they'd like to hear. You know what would be a cool way to provide feedback? How's that, Alex? Is with a survey we've already made. And if you're listening to this, the survey link is at the very, very bottom. The very bottom of the show notes. All the way past everybody, all the names. All the names, all the names of all the beautiful and great smelling and strong and Mm -hmm. um, nimble people who already support the Patreon. The link's way down at the very bottom. Or it's in our Discord, or you could probably email us. I bet we'd email it back to you if you asked. Message us on social media if you want. We'll, We'll send you the link. 100%. So if you're already a patron, uh, we'd love to hear about what you like, what you don't like, what you'd maybe like to hear more of or less of or new stuff you'd like to hear. If you're not a patron already, uh, let us know what might uh, convince you to become a patron. Uh, Is there something we're not doing on Patreon that would persuade you in the nicest possible way to become a patron? We'd love to hear about it. Right. The sky's the limit. If there's something cool you want to see or hear on the Patreon, let us know. So complete that survey. Links at the very bottom of the show notes. Let us know what you'd like to hear more of or read more of or whatever on the Patreon feed, and we'll see what we can do. We appreciate all of your support so much. Thank you for listening. For those of you who are already Patreon supporters, thank you so much for your support. Welcome to Broken Tusk Rising, a Pathfinder 2nd Edition actual play in the Galarian campaign setting. We're playing through the quest for the Frozen Flame adventure path. I'm Sean, and I'm playing Andreas Witchborn, the Human Magus. I'm Jessica, and I'm playing Zancath, the Halfling Fighter. I'm Jeanette, and I'm playing Jonesy, the Human Cleric. This is Josh, and I'm playing Corgo, the Human Barbarian. Last time on Broken Tusk Rising, the scouts encountered quicklings and twigjacks who were about to go to war with each other, but Zankath managed to talk them into sharing their forest and instead attacking the burning mammoths when they passed through. With that problem solved, they continued their journey to Lost Mammoth Valley. After a few days, they came upon a burning mammoth campsite by a lake, and after sneaking up on the camp, overheard a powerful reaver talking to some hunters and a burn bearer. We left the heroes just as Zankath resolved to shoot the burn bearer. What's the plan? Do we want to wait for them to separate and then, like, engage when they're split up? I'm comfortable with uh, either... I mean, our original plan was that we would try and talk to them. It sounds like they're not going to be happy to talk to us. I mean, I'm comfortable being Gorbo, so... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking take take a... Uh, weaken them and then talk to them, but if you want, I could pop out of the grass and try to have a conversation. Or we can go long, just murder them all. I think we can wait for them to kind of split off. I like that idea, and then we yeah. could just grab one of them. Yeah, that's a good idea, Jonesy. Sure. Yes, that is that is exactly what I said. Okay, uh, well, they don't seem to be splitting off. They all seem to be hanging around the area. Oh, somebody uh, will have to poop soon. Yeah, no, definitely look, <laughs> look at them. <laughs> We're going to have to take one of them out before they finish all these traps. Look at them, they're setting up snares. They are setting up snares, it's true. There are four of them, right? There's the one guy who seems obsessed with fire. There are two hunters and a reaver. you fought a, a couple reavers before. One guy is piling up some stones 
and some boards or some some logs to try to build an observation platform. Even if it's just a few feet taller, uh, he'd be able to see a bit further. Wait, I have an idea. What if I go and I sneak over to the supplies and then I cast burning hands and I light all the supplies and snares and things on fire and that would at least weaken their position. I think if you sneak up and cast burning hands that will start combat. But if it's on their supplies, my thinking is they'll just be like, they could maybe blame it on the fire guy being careless. Oh, yeah, maybe. Maybe. I uh, I would maybe let you make some kind of deception check for that if you want to spruce that uh, that idea up a little bit. That's just one idea, though. Is, uh, w- what do you think? I like I like waiting for the first pooper. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like I that one too, Corgo. <laughs> Telling you these snares are going to be done any moment. Look at him. He's, he's walking the fishing wire across the camp as we speak. All right. Well, then what do you suggest, sir? Either set fire to something, or uh, I hop on my bullhorn and yell at them from a distance so Zankath gets in there and intimidates them. They are totally unawares. If you want to attack, I'd let you roll, you know, if you want to roll stealth for initiative, if you had some other idea for a skill you want to roll. Mm-hmm. I am much better at stealth than I am at perceiving things. I'm not much better, but I'm better. I'd even, if you wanted to argue that you're using the terrain to get some advantage, I would let you roll nature. Is the terrain, is it, are we, can we position ourselves to where there would be an advantage? I think that would be part of the decision whether to engage now or try something else. Would you like me to go to the map? Take us to the The map. map. The map. The map. Take it to the bridge. I don't have a token. I'm working on it. There I go. Whoa, look at that. Mm. Oh yeah, these goose don't know what's going to hit them. (laughs) Last time we did this, I got I got hit in the chest with an axe a couple times. <laughs> oh, fond memories of this ambush. Well, this time I've got you taken care of, Gorgo. Don't you worry. All right, awesome. So I'm going to let you place yourselves where you want around the border of the map. Okay, I want to be beside Gorgo. Awesome. Fine, I don't. I don't need you. Where's the fire guy? Let's get the fire guy first. <laughs> Jonesy, don't be jealous. No, never, never. I'm just pure and good. So anywhere around? Anywhere around the border of the map. So around the outer edge. Oh. Okay, I'm going to go back over here. Wait, I'm, I'm still going out. I can't see the whole map all at once. Uh, I might not want to be here. We're doing shields, too. I think this actually might be an okay spot. Andreas leans over to Corgo. And he whispers to him, I've consulted the stars. And they've given me a great idea. I think we're on the right track here. I'm going to cast a spell on you, so if you happen to get the jump on me here when we decide to go in, just just hold off and don't run don't run away from me too quickly. <laughs> okay. I'm going to move Zankath and Jonesy to the edge of the map, okay? You guys are not at the edge. Oh, okay. Sorry, I wasn't I was zoomed out enough. Okay, is everyone where they want to be? Oh, let's have okay, so Corgo mm-hmm. and Andreas on the north side. Let's have Let's have Hungar come on the west. We got him surrounded. Maybe we should be with Hung... No, I'm sure this is fine. This works. And where do you want your wolf to be? Probably with me and Zadkath, I think. Yeah. Okay. This looks good. Yeah? Yeah. So Andreas and Gorgo are to the north side together. Uh, Jonesy, Rumpy, and Zankath are on the east. And Hungar is stalking in from the west like a silent, okay. deadly saber tooth killer. With the lake to the south, blocking their exit. Blocking their only escape. Okay. Surely a Kelpie will jump out and grab them for us. <laughs> <laughs> so choose what you want to roll for initiative and let me know what it is if it's not just perception. I'm rolling stealth. I think stealth makes sense. I'm rolling perception. I'm rolling stealth as well. With a bonus from looking at the stars. Boom. Nice. I got a 25. Oh, Corgo with a 27. What? Oh, 16. <laughs> Corgo got a nat 20, and Jonesy got a nat 20. He got a 29. Oh, I wish I got that one roll after this. That's fine. Man, for having the highest stealth, uh, that did not go well for me. <laughs> you were just so impressed with everybody else's it's true. ability to get prepared. I have Pilgrim's token, so I am I go ahead of anybody I tied with. Okay. You didn't Ooh. tie with anybody. Yeah, I did. 
He tied him uh, with a fire boy. Oh, you fire, did. Okay. Fire boy. I see. You used it. I see. All right. So I'm going to go. I'm just going to, for the sake of clarity, go through everybody in order and let you tell me what your initiative roll was. Jonesy, what did you get? 29. Corgo? 27. And then we have one of the pyromaniac burning mammoths. And Andreas? Uh, I got a 25, but I tied with that pyromaniac, so I go first. Okay, so I'm going to drag you. There we go. Drag you before the burn bear. And uh, then the burning mammoth reaver, the big guy. And then the wolf goes with a 23. And then one of the hunters with a 16. Then another hunter with a 16. Oh, they both rolled 16s, huh? And then Zancath. Also with a 16. Uh, what's your dexterity? Well, her perception is a plus 11. Perception's plus 9. Stealth, oh, stealth is plus 11. Is plus 11. Uh, okay, you beat their perception. So I'm going to have you go in front of them. Oh, goody. Jonesy, at the same time you all burst from the grass, you're going to go first. What do you want to do? Jonesy will slap both hands against his face and then drag them down into a prayer motion and cast spiritual weapon. Ooh. So nice. a scimitar, cool. a magical floating scimitar, appears in front of the big guy who is probably the leader. All right. I'm going to pick something here to represent that. We'll pick the cockatrice. Oh, that's not that's too big. That's fine. Didn't really matter, right? So where are you putting it? In front of the big guy who was like telling the him to... guy. Uh, that's this guy there. Yeah, that guy. Okay. So it's going to appear in front of him. He jumps back. What? What is this? And then it's going to slice at him. What? That's a nat 20 for a 29. Yeah. Nice. Oh, dear. All right. Let me just get ready to <gasps> take some hit points away from him. Oops. Okay. So that should be hmm. 16 points of damage. Is that right? I don't know if it yeah. doubles both. Yeah. Okay. 16 points of damage. Okay. 16 points of damage. Okay, ouch. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was an in- incredibly painful, harmful attack. So nice. Wow. You have an action left. I do. So I will cast... Oh, I can't cast... Wait, can I cast Guidance on Sandcat? That was yeah. yesterday. So I will cast Guidance on her. Okay. Cool. And Ooh. that's it for me. All right. Corgo. Jonesy has just horribly injured their leader. What do you want to do? Corgo's got to wait because Andreas told him to hold on. So there's no reshuffling in Pathfinder 2 of your, you know, you can't delay and then permanently be, but I don't think so. I don't think you can can delay. Yeah, you can delay. That's what Corgo does. You're going to delay until after Andreas? Yep. All right. So you move in the initiative. Andreas, it is now your turn. Andreas turns to Corgo and says, you always were the tallest of us, but let's exaggerate that a little bit. And he casts Ooh. Enlarge on Corgo. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. So if you drag that spell effect Enlarge onto your token or onto your character sheet, you will <laughs> oh. magically <be> done. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. What is happening to my body? <laughs> <laughs> and then with my last action, I will uh, sprint to the southwest towards Harangara to complete the surrounding effect of this camp. Uh, and I can move 35 feet because I cast Longstride earlier. Awesome. Okay. Corgo, it is once again your turn. What do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. enormous. This and you have reach. This large Corgo is looming over these puny barrels by their tent. <laughs> this is awesome. He was very stealthy, is sitting there in the tall grass, but now the, the the jig is up, so he'll step over and he's just he's got a his shield out and he's holding that magic hammer that's now huge and he wants to try to smash the fire boy into the river, even though it's right. like, I don't know, fifty feet away. Okay. <laughs> a twenty eight to hit. <laughs> okay, that is a critical hit. Oh, 12 damage. Well, 24 damage. 24 damage. Okay. He goes flying and lands in the river dead. (laughs) Oh. Oh. I didn't mean to kill him one day. All right, it's fine. 
You have an action left. Torgo's going to have Rungara keep up with uh, Andreas, so that way they are kind of right next to each other. Okay. And that's his turn. Okay. That, and... was, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it would be the fire guy's turn, but he is sort of sputtering out in the river. And that means it's the big guy's turn. The big guy is confronted by this spiritual weapon, and he doesn't like it. He is going to run from it and charge at... Uh, yeah, he's going to charge at Corgo. Mm, that guy's brave. He sees this giant guy, and he says, Glory! Glory to the burning mammoths! And charges at Corgo. He's going to go, let's see, around. That's five feet... And then, yeah, then 20 feet. Okay. I assume the spiritual weapon does not have an attack of opportunity. It does not. Nope. Okay. All right. So he's going to attack Corgo. He runs up. Now, does Corgo have attacks of opportunity? Because he just had to move within your reach. No. Okay. First attack with this battle axe. 30 to hit. Oof. That hits. And it's a critical hit. What's with oh, all no. the crits? Yeah, lots of crits lately. 16 points of damage. And it has the, well, he can't sweep anybody, but it has the cut down trait. So I need you to make a fortitude saving throw. Oh, oh right. This is the guy with the knockdown. Ugh. Oh, I rolled no. a one, but I'm going to use a hero point. Good call. Oh, okay. Good call. Good choice. Rolling again. 27. All right. That is a success. You do not fall prone. So he almost trips you up with this powerful hit, but thanks to your enormous size, you just take a step back and you're not going down. And he's got one more attack. Nobody in range. Okay, he all he has left that he can do is hit you again. Well, try to hit you again. 24. He does hit me again. Dang. Oh. Eight points of damage. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> and it is the wolf's turn. Uh, the wolf is ready for action. It has been very controlled, very stealthy. It senses that it is time to let loose, and it is going to simply charge up to, let's see, speed is 35. So it's going to take two moves. Yeah, it's going to take two strides to move up to this hunter here and make an attack with its last action. Right? Any other cool things you can do here? Uh, no. All right, Wolf here we just go. Is cool. Everything Wolf about just it is, is cool. cool. Oh. 26 to hit is a critical hit. Woo! Wow. Wow. All right, so the wolf chomps down on this hunter, sort of shakes him around in her jaws. Doesn't kill him, but it's, it's close. This hunter doesn't have much left in him. And that means it is Zankath's turn. Zankath, all heck is broken loose. There's chaos everywhere. What are you doing? So much chaos. Uh, I'm going to take my point blank shot stance. And then I'm going to shoot the leader guy who's fighting Corgo. Okay. Oh, that's a 14 plus the guidance, which didn't roll automatically. So 15 to hit. No, that doesn't hit. I didn't think it would. Uh, I'm going to try again. Don't worry, guys. I'm balancing out all the nat 20s. <laughs> <laughs> it's only fair. A 10 to hit. <laughs> yeah, you really are. <laughs> uh, that's a critical miss, but fortunately, that doesn't really matter. Yep. Just zings past him. All right. It just bounces off of his weird armor. And that means it is the hunter's turn. This hunter has been attacked by the wolf. And he's screaming in pain, panicking. He's going to just attack this wolf uh, with his spear. Rumpy, no. Wow. A 27. Oh, no. oh, my goodness. So he manages to hit uh, Is uh, on poor Rumpy. Is that a critical? Shouldn't be. 27? That is a critical. No. A critical hit. And Rumpy cries out. Ah. 10 points of damage to Rumpy. And he's also off guard. What is that? When critically hit by a hunter's strike, the target is off guard until the end of its next turn. 
So off guard is the uh, because uh, Pathfinder new flat footed. Yeah, yeah. Pathfinder has <laughs> been okay. replacing all of their terminology <laughs> that they stole from D and D in order moving. to be uh, compatible with their new open license. So uh, right. off guard replaces flat footed from now gotcha. on. Gotcha. And he's going to. He doesn't really have a lot of options here. Uh, he can't use his ranged weapons. Doesn't have any other special abilities, and his target is now flat-footed, so he's going to try again. Sure. And that is an eight, which is a miss. And again, no other actions. I guess he could run. That's what he'll do. He'll run. So he's going to run uh, toward the water, past the spiritual weapon, and that's that hunter's turn. And then the other hunter is going to use a sling... He's going to throw a sling bullet at this huge man <laughs> who knocked one of his friends clear across the camp. Uh, he rolls an 11 to hit. That does not hit. It hits him in the face, but it's the part where he's already missing teeth, so he's good. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> hurt. And he's going to reload and throw again. 23. Oh, that hits. Wow. That got him right in the tooth. Seven points of damage. Okay. And at the end of his turn, he doesn't have any actions left. Jonesy, it's your turn. Oh, man, Jonesy's faced with a question that Corgo once asked him, which was, <laughs> if it was me or Rumpy, uh-huh. who would you save? <laughs> Corgo's fine. Eh, is he? The spiritual weapon is going to... It's going to move towards the guy who's right in front of Corgo. Okay. So I can move it and attack with it. For a 25. That hits. Nice. Six damage. Oof. Okay. He's bloodied. One action to move it. Wait. Yeah, it's just a sustain. Yeah, so, one so action. it's just one action. So I saw two. Jones is going to try out this new sweet staff. Ooh. If I can. I don't know if Corgo. Corgo actually might be further Please than heal the wolf. Please feet. heal the wolf. You have to you're, do, yeah, you're too far in from the wolf. Who said I was trying to heal the wolf, you guys? Just your range for heals. Yeah, I'm not close yeah. enough. You need to save Rumpy. I'm going to try to hit this guy, this injured guy, in front of Corgo again with a divine lance. No, that's 30 feet too. Oh my god, I'm too far. Okay, Jonesy's going to move up to stand just a little bit behind Rumpy. I'm going to move twice. So yeah, Jonesy moved... To be beside, kind of right in the center between Corgo and Drumpy. Right. So the current situation on the map is Corgo has come in from the north, and he's got the big burning mammoth just south of him, and then on the other side of it is this spiritual weapon. Nearby are Jonesy and the wolf, and the two hunters have sort of uh, located themselves near the middle and lower part of the camp to the south. Zankath is off to the east firing her bow. And Andreas and Rungara are hemming them in from the west side of the camp. All right, so that is Jonesy's turn. Andreas, what do you want to do? Uh, Andreas will stride up to this uh, first hunter that he's closest to. Um, He will uh, remember what the stars told him this morning, rolling a D8. It's a three. Uh, I think on a three I get a plus one. Uh, Yes, I get a plus one circumstance bonus from my astrology specialization. And I'll use that to grapple this man. Ooh, nice. So that's a plus 12. Oh, no, that's a 14. And that's against his fortitude DC, I think we said, right? Yeah, so that'll fail. Yeah, you're not able to grapple him. Uh, I won't hear a point. I'll just uh, do a follow-up. I'll just attack with my meteor hammer. Ah. Yeah. But you have another session, and you'll get another one. Mm. Also, oh, What stubborn. if I want to use it on something else? You yeah, won't. you won't. Like this natural one. Like this, oh. like this roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, there you go, guys. All that right. That was my turn. I miss. All right. So I'm afraid that was a 10, so that misses as well. Uh, this guy is panicking, and he's just ducking and weaving, trying to stay away from you. He looks quite terrified. Corgo, this puny man in front of you hit you. It keeps hitting me in my legs. <laughs> Does the spiritual weapon provide flanking to make this guy off guard or no? Nope. 
I don't think so. I don't so. see why it wouldn't. No, it, it says specifically in the spell that it doesn't. Oh, man. Okay, so It doesn't take no. up space, and it doesn't provide blanking. That's too bad. It's not a creature, is the argument for D&D, at okay. least. Okay. Whoa, what happened right. to Rungaro just now? I moved, oh, you moved Rungaro okay. to the same space as a spiritual weapon. Ah. Can I do that? If not, yes, it doesn't take fun. up space, it does not so take I don't space. see why not. Okay, so Hrungar senses Korgo's to a big target. So Korgo's clumsy one, so that dropped his armor class. Hrungar moves in, runs behind the guy, so that grants flanking or makes him off guard. Off guard, yeah. And Korgo's gonna swing again. And it was a 16, but I'm gonna use my last hero point. Because that probably 16 doesn't hit. 16 does not hit. Roll again. That was oh. a Oh no. Corgo doesn't like that. And he's getting beat up by this guy. Should he hit again? Ooh. Got a better idea? I, I mean, yeah. yeah. Go for he it. could raise his shield up, but that's not going to help a lot. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, in your current situation, you do a lot of damage. 10, 10% lower chance to get crit on. Yep, it does reduce your chance of getting mm. critted by this guy, and you know that it's bad when he hits you. Mm, Corgo will raise as he gets low, and he starts guarding his legs because the guy keeps poking him. Uh. <laughs> All right, that's his reactions. The guy who's standing right in front of Corgo, who is now flanked by Hrungara and Corgo, he brings up this massive battle axe, and first, he's going to howl. No. And I need Hrungara, Corgo, Jonesy... Andreas, yeah, ev- uh, yeah, everybody except for Zancath needs to make a will save. No, he makes it. He makes it. Sorry, scratch that. He makes an intimidation DCs. check. Yeah. What? Voracious. Twenty-eight. So does that beat your will DC? That's a crit yes. success. A crit success? Mm, not a crit for me, but a success. Okay, so if it's a crit success for you, you are frightened too. So who's frightened too? Andreas? Yeah. Corgo, you're frightened too. Uh, The wolf is frightened too. You think the wolf would be okay with howling, but nope. (laughs) Jonesy, you are not affected. Uh, Jonesy's was a normal failure. Yeah. Okay, so Jonesy's frightened one. (laughs) The spiritual weapon cannot be frightened. Unless okay. that's... Oh, that's probably on uh, Rungara. So first he demoralizes. <laughs> the scimitar's so afraid. <laughs> <laughs> so close to the lake, I might rust. <laughs> and he, then he's going to attack with the battle axe. A 20 to hit. Oh, Not a that, great roll. That just hit because of the frightened, too. Oh. Uh, oh. All right. Bummer. Here he goes. Eight damage. And... Oh, I was using my shield, even. And you need to make a fortitude save. Not this again. No. He doesn't roll or whatever. No. 25. Nice. You succeed. You are not knocked prone. And then he's going to take one final attack with that battle axe. My shins. 23 to hit. <laughs> That's a hit too. All right. Make another saving throw. I'll roll the damage. Stop it. 12 points of damage. Gorgo's down anyway. Oops. Okay, oh. so he's definitely prone then. Gorgo goes down. He's taking a big boy nap. I feel like we've been underestimating these Reaver guys. The other ones are not that big of a deal, but those Reavers are tough hitters. Yeah, well, they're elite now. Yeah. All right, so with Corgo down, Rumpy, uh, Rumpy's going to step up and attack this guy that, uh, flank the guy that Andreas is attacking. So he's going to step forward, or actually stride forward, and attack this hunter. With his power, with excuse me, with her powerful jaws, Rumpy is a she, and that is a hit. Yeah, Rumpy. Only three points of damage, I'm afraid, but every little bit helps. It's because she's standing in the fire. She can't put her toesies down for too long. And might as well bite again. Do it. A critical hit. Nice. Yes. All right. Uh, is there any critical effect? No, there's not. Is she a wolf or a dire wolf? A dire wolf. There's a pack attack action. Uh, needs two allies for pack attack. But, yeah. She does have so, a knockdown. I don't... Oh, okay, I do see that. Uh, but it's not listed under my actions or passives here. What does knockdown do? Uh, knockdown is an action. If uh, the last action was a successful strike, she just knocks him prone with that no roll instead of attacking. Oh, okay. I should have 
Hmm. Yeah, Foundry is not showing me much about how that works here. I should have chosen that, but I didn't know about that. So I'm just going to go with the critical hit and roll the damage. It's just eight more points of damage. But with that extra eight points of damage, this hunter is badly hurt. Nice. And that brings us to Zankath. Zankath, core goes down, uh-huh. and this reaver is standing right in front of him. Okay. Uh, Zankath shoots. I'm going to use a... Uh, wait, I get to... 17 doesn't hit, does it? Uh, no, it does not. Hero point. 24 to hit. That hits. Uh, five damage because the plus two with the... Point blank shot. Yes. Okay. Still have one more action. Uh, I'm going to yell out to him and demoralize. And uh, I'm going to say... What will Picano do to you when he finds out you have failed? Will he torture you like he tortures so many of his other supposed allies? Uh, so that's a uh, nice. intimidation. All right. You're going to try to demoralize him? Oh, I rolled a 10. Why are my rolls always garbage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid that that didn't work. Wait a minute. I still have another hero point. You do have a second hero point. I'm going to go ahead and use it because why not? That's a 24. Ooh, that worked. Yeah, so he found that a little more frightening than, uh, I don't know, you, you, there's something about the way you ended that phrase that just caught him at the very end, and he suddenly gets a little bit nervous looking, thinking about what Pecano will do to him if he fails, and that means he's frightened one. Yes. Nice. Very nice. Good job. We're all scared. <laughs> all right. Is that the end of your actions? That's the end. The hunter, who is down to the south, is going to fire a sling bullet at, oh, let's say the wolf, the big scary wolf that is chewing on his friend. And let's see here, sling. Oh, you know what, though? Oh, I should have used my reaction. Huh, and Corgo went down. Well, it's too late. He doesn't really want to move anywhere anyway. Uh, so, he's, yeah, he's going to throw that sling bullet. No. He hits poor Rumpy. Stop she it. she takes six points of damage. And... Uh, I'm going to fire another... Uh, I'm going to reload, but with my third action, I'm actually going to move farther away. I'm going to move there. So this hunter moves a bit to the west, looking like maybe he's going to try to escape. And then the next hunter, the one that is now trapped between the wolf and Andreas, is going to try to stab the wolf. Come on, you coward. Hit a man. Stop trying to kill Rumpy. That's a hit. Fight someone your own species. Ten points of damage to poor Rumpy. And Rumpy goes down. Mike, stop it. Mike. Heal Rumpy. I think Rumpy... (laughs) I don't know how it works with NPCs. It's up to Mike. If you want to try to... They live. ...save Rumpy, I I would let you do that. And then with another action, he's going to try to stab Andreas. Oh, Okay, he just knocked someone down to zero. That means this hunter gets to stride again and as, as a reaction. Does this guy have that too? Yes, he does. Oh, that's a cool so the ability. The Burning Mammoth Reaver also has this spurred by death reaction, and he strides up to Jonesy. All right, and then uh, let's see. He knocks someone down, so he's going to attack Andreas with a penalty. 16 to hit is a miss, right? Yep. And then... He's going to move. He runs to the southeast. Jonesy, it's your turn. This reaver has stepped up to you. He's grinning at you. Your turn, old man. Oh, my, you're the worst. (laughs) Or the best. No, the worst. Oh, the worst. Okay. (laughs) Dang. Just, just. thought maybe you just misspoken. You're just (laughs) the worst kind of person. Oh. Um, Oh. Oh, dear. Jonesy is going to stare this guy down in the face. You you killed my one of my best friends and my my best wolf friend. <laughs> uh, you you're the next one. Um, and then the spiritual oh, weapon. Oh, Corgo, I need to move you in an, in an yeah, initiative, right? Yep, yep. Move you just before the reaver, and I'm also going to move the wolf. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean I'm, I shouldn't have interrupted you. Sorry about that. Thanks for reminding me that everybody's dead. Okay, <laughs> so spiritual weapon moves to behind the leader. Okay. And hopefully this hits. 18. 
Geese Frightened One. Don't forget to tick down your condition if you haven't done that already. I did not tick down my condition. Oh, we'll tick down at the end of this turn. Yeah. Yeah, 18 is a hit. Yes. Oh, no, wait. Uh, that's five damage. Oof. Okay, now this guy is really badly hurt. Well, he's not going to be hurt for much longer because Jonesy's just going to panic heal again. Just like that one time in the cave. All right. So I'm just going to do a 30-foot emanation. I know I can hit everybody. I just can't seem to measure it again for some reason. You're trying to do a 30-foot emanation? Yes. Okay, so I can reach everybody. I can reach Corgo oh, and nice. Rumpy. But yep. unfortunately, I'm going to heal this dude too. Yeah. But I just can't let everybody no. die. I think I can use my staff for this. You can. It'll just be a first level spell. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I will use. Oh wait! You just used an action. What do you mean? I uh, used so one you can't action. Do the th- you can't do the three action heal. Oh, I can't do the three. But yes, can I do- can. Your spell is okay. I can heal one person. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, Jones is gonna heal Corgo. Okay. For sixteen hit points. Oh, plus, can't everybody plus. Oh my gosh. Plus what, Sean? <laughs> plus another eight. And don't forget the staff gives you a plus one as well. It's a good heal Ooh, right there. Plus eight. So that's plus nine. Yeah. So that's 25 hit points. Back to yep. Corgo. That's the end of Jonesy's turn. It is the end. Andreas. Andreas doesn't like that this guy over on the left is running away, so he's going to speed over to him, make a quick ghost touch meteor hammer strike. Whoop, bam. Uh, that's a 16 to hit. A 16 is a miss. Um, oh, man. Uh, I guess I'll do a second one. I get a 16 again. Not my day. Already used your hero point. Yeah. The burn bearer is dead. The dire wolf is down. Corgo, you're up. You awaken on the ground. You can see your wolf friend is down. Krangara is looking at you a little worried. What do you want to do? When you go down from mm-hmm. unconscious, you drop your you drop your weapon, right? So you have to use like an action to pick it back up and all that. And an action to stand up. Corgo will stand. Okay. And he doesn't need to pick anything up because he's getting really angry now. <laughs> so, oh no, he's raging. So he, it's been a, it's when been was the last time, time he raged? It's been a long time since he raged, so he's been just trying to control himself, but he's done with that. <laughs> he, he loses it so badly, he goes to bite this guy. <laughs> ah! <laughs> but he's only 16, so that doesn't do a whole lot. No, even with this guy. Oh, uh, yeah, even with this guy's demoralized state, he he's still missed. Okay. Uh, but he looks at you in terror as this, as you get back up, and you just go berserk and start trying to bite him. Yeah, and Corgo's moving like a cat, and it's awkward because he's 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 got a shield on one arm, and so even like spend some time like looking at it like an animal would be confused by why a shield's attached to their arm. That's what Corgo does halfway okay. through that little pounce. Corgo, this reaver sees you coming, trying to bite him, and just in terror, he swings his battle axe at you. <laughs> he hits. And he hits you. Ten points of damage. Woof. You need to make a fortitude save. Oh, no, not that again. Remember that you're not frightened anymore. Stop it. I am not frightened anymore. 23. You succeed. Okay. And he's also going to take a swing at Jonesy. A non-natural 20. That's a hit. All right. He hits Jonesy. Uh, for 14 points of damage, max damage. This guy's the worst. And Jonesy has to make a fortitude save. Okay. 25. 25. Jonesy is standing strong, and with his last action, he takes an action, and he pulls out some kind of uh, alchemical bomb thing. Oh, boy. And that's his last action. Zankath, it's your turn. So, question about this alchemical bomb that he has just pulled out. Yeah. I I am not familiar with how grapple works in Pathfinder. Uh, if I were grappling with him, would he be able to use whatever this bomb is? I don't see why he couldn't, Sean. Any grabbed is the condition that he gets if you grapple him. Okay. It means he's flat-footed, sorry, off guard. And immobilized. Mm-hmm. He can't do any manipulate action, so he wouldn't be able to pull another potion out mm. 
but he but could he still use that one. whatever he's got. Okay. Uh, okay. But he's got a he has to succeed at a flat DC five check where it's lost. No, but he's already pulled it out. So now all he has to do is throw it, which he's doesn't doesn't require manipulate. Oh, okay. So throwing it's not a manipulate or whatever. Yeah. No, just just removing it. Uh, okay. All right. So what do you want to do? You can see he's badly hurt. You can see the other hunters are badly hurt. Shoot up. Okay, I'm going to shoot him. One guy on the far west looks like he's going to get away from Andreas. Oh, he can't outrun me. <laughs> oh, that's true. Oh, that's boy. a good point. You can't, you can't outrun the long strider, so good point. Hey, that's a 15 to hit. I'm afraid that's a miss. Why? Man, we got we to gotta roll over 10. Why do the dice hate me? Yeah. I'm going to try again. You got a plus, tw- uh, well, now you got a plus 7 to hit. I mean, one of these has got to get through. You would think... Oh hey, that's gosh. another 15. <laughs> awesome. Mike, put that mod on you again. I, 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 I don't need, I wouldn't even know how. I wouldn't know which mod to, I'm not that courageous when it comes to the mods. All right, so Zancath, you take a couple shots and they miss, and now you're running up running, toward? Running towards him. Okay, interesting. So the hunter that is near Andreas, he tries to run away, but how are we going to do this? Because... He just, I, he can't, he can't outrun me. He can't me. get away from you. So I can run 35 feet of move. So. Yeah, he can't run faster. So I guess the two of you sort of run off the map, but he can't get away from you. Right. So we'll just leave your positions there. Yeah. He tries to run away from you. He takes a stride action and, and you're on his heels. He sees he is not getting away from you. So he is going to take an action to load his sling and then take an action to shoot at you. Or sorry, to sling it at you. Sure. It's an 18. 18 is a miss. Okay. And then the other hunter, the one that is to the south of the camp, he runs around to the east, coming up to the south of Zancath, and he's going to throw a sling bullet at Zancath. He reloaded last round. An 11, that's a miss. miss. And he reloads again, and that's the end of his turn. Jonesy. Okay. Spiritual weapon. 13 is a miss. Ugh. Okay. Let's see. I need to do a flat check for the last round, actually, for Rumpy, don't I? DC 11. Uh, he has one failure, so his Rumpy is now dying, too. Oh, man. Poor Rumpy. Oh, Rumpy. I was going to cast Burning Hands, but I can't let Rumpy die. So I'm going to stabilize Rumpy. Now you cast Stabilize on Rumpy. And unfortunately, that's all I can do. All right. Rumpy is now unconscious. And that's Jonesy's turn. Andreas. Guy is throwing sling bullets at you from very close. Yeah, and he's very frustrating. I've got reach, so I'm just going to keep trying to strike at him. Um, I'm going to do a spell strike. Okay. Uh, with gouging claw. And... Oh my gosh. What's with all the 15s? Tell me about it. Uh, I'm afraid he, he ducks out of the way. He looks pretty frightened, but he's nimble still. And he jumps out of the way of your meteor hammer. That's it. Assuming he moved away, I had to move up to him, so I'm done. Uh, let's see. Uh, he, that guy's dead. The wolf is down. Corgo, it's your turn. Corgo's staring at this frustrating little man, like, Why are you so strong and scary? <laughs> ah! 28 to, oh, to wow. just start clawing into him. That is a critical hit. All right, take you 18 points of damage. And Corgo, tell me how you bite this guy to death. <laughs> oh, gosh. Isn't this a family <laughs> show? Not anymore. So Corgo lifts the guy up. He screams that. Why, why are you so scary? <laughs> strong versus the smaller guy. And then he just he bites into his neck like a saber-toothed tiger would. And then blood's all over him. Sorry, sorry Mom. And he, <laughs> throws, he throws the corpse down to the ground. And then he looks over, so Andreas is gone, looks over and sees that guy slinging bullets at Zanks. He'll take one action to move closer to the guy by the river. Yeah, so the guy who moved to the east to throw sling bullets towards Zancath now has a huge Corgo towering over him. Yes. And he quivers in fear. And Zancath. Okay, well, I just moved the wrong direction. Okay, I can. <laughs> I, I'm going to move uh, down to the uh, last remaining hunter that are, that is around, 
and I'm going to grapple him. Ah, okay. So that is athletics, yes? Mm-hmm. No chance I could use acrobatics? That would be cool. No, I no. don't think so. It's not that hard to grapple this guy. Let's see what kind of roll I get. That's a seven. But a seven won't do it. So you grab onto his leg and he just kind of shakes it, shakes you off of it. Yeah, that seems right. Can I try again? I've still got another action. Yeah, you have a, a multiple attack penalty. This will go fine. A nine. Uh, no, I'm afraid a nine does not succeed. But you didn't critically fail on either of those, so could be worse. Wow, that's so sad that I didn't critically fail with a seven. <laughs> <laughs> She's also going to say to Corgo, uh, Corgo, we need to keep him alive, if possible. What? <laughs> <laughs> and the hunter that is now surrounded by the halfling and by this giant man, he's going to take a step back. Now, he doesn't know you have an attack of opportunities, Ancath, if there's something you want to do. I attempt to punch him. Let's see how it goes. That's a 13 to hit. That does not succeed. So he steps back. You take a swing at him, but he's okay with that. He's going to reload his sling, and he's going to throw a bullet at Corgo. Sure. 19. <laughs> that is... <laughs> Gosh. Oh man, one of those days. We thought this would be an easy roll. Yeah. Aren't you glad you ambushed them? Yeah. Uh, oh, seven points of damage. Glad there wasn't a bunch of traps around their camp. You want to know another secret? Because you guys had a previous critical success in one of your delay activities, this encounter is down one burning mammoth. Oh. Ooh. There would be one more uh, guy with the, the fire, one more burn bearer, if you hadn't done that. So that was that hunter's turn. The hunter that's running away from Andreas, he's. You know, in the grass, he keeps looking over his shoulder. He stops. He sees that he can't outrun this weird old man who runs faster than a much younger man. (laughs) So he gives up on this sling, and he just drops it, pulls out his spear again, and attempts to stab at Andreas. Uh, Here we go, man to man. Fifteen. Miss. So he gets another attack at a penalty. Twenty? Yes. Okay. Nine points of damage as he stabs Andreas. You weren't expecting that, I think. This guy hasn't proven particularly competent. Just makes me feel invigorated. <laughs> Jonesy. Right. I can move this spiritual weapon 120 feet. I'm going to sure. move it. I know. It's pretty good. That is cool. Yeah. Mike, you're going to have... Oh, where do you want it? I want to move it to, yep, exactly this guy. Okay. You're going to move it to the guy that Corgo and Zancath are trying to kill, but he keeps getting away from them. No, 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 no. Very, very specifically not trying oh, to kill. not trying to kill. The guy they're oh, not trying not to kill. we're not trying to kill this guy. Well, he's it's only, so frustrating. He's only injured. He'll be fine. 15 to hit. Is a miss. Okay, so that didn't work. And then Jones, he's just trying to look and making sure Rumpy's okay and he's trying to move his weapon around and then last time he saw Corgo he was fine and now Corgo's dying again so he's gonna <laughs> run over and get a little bit closer so he can heal him next time. Alright, so Jonesy runs closer to Corgo. Reaching out, getting ready to ca- heal him next turn. Great. Andreas, guy has stepped up in your face with a spear. Okay, I spend an action to recharge my spell strike and a spell strike. This time it's going to be fire. Okay. And yeah. Oh, there we go. 18 to hit for 13 points damage. That is a hit. And with that, tell me how you kill this schlub. So, uh, yeah, it's just like this, like, chase through the brush. This guy's, like, shooting sling bullets back at Andreas. Some of them are pinging off his armor. Some of them are just, like, grazing his Andreas' forehead as he chases after him. This guy... Finally gives up the chase, drops his sling, pulls out a spear, comes up, gives Andreas like two little jabs. One of them go through his left arm and Andreas just like shorthands the meteor hammer, basically like grabbing right onto the cage itself and just brings it up and it like just bursts in flame as he smashes it into the guy's head. And he crumples to the ground. Oh, anything else you want to do? Uh, that's all my actions. All right, Corgo, there's only one guy left. Can you finish this? Please, please finish this. Corgo strides over the guy. So you so you can attack with lethal weapons at a minus four to be non-lethal. Minus and two. Oh, is it minus two? I looked yeah. it up earlier. Oh, nice. Also, you're in a rage. If you don't keep this guy alive, it makes sense. 
So Cora goes, <laughs> kind of stared at me. He's going to say, Second throw me out of my life, your face, so I'm just going to grab you and you better let me. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's going to try to grrapple this guy with a 15, so he doesn't. And then, no. he, then he looks over at Zanka and goes, You better grab this guy before I bite up his face. <laughs> and so he's going to help Zanka grab this guy on his turn. So he's going to save an action to allow Zanka to grapple him or to help. To do an aid later? Him. Yeah. You're going to do an aid check? Okay. Yeah. All right. Zankath. I run up. Zankath runs up to this guy that is cowering before Corgo. And I grapple. All right. With a plus one. With a plus Corgo's, one. Corgo's helping. Did Corgo succeed on a... And do you, don't you need to roll? He yeah. Did. He got a he 22, did. so that's a plus oh, great. one. What's Zankath's grapple attempt? Okay. We're going to all just take a moment and think of high numbers. <laughs> Because I've done one thing this fight, and I need there to at least be a second. Double digits, double numbers. digits, double digits, double digits. You want a double digit roll? Yeah. That's a 22. A 22 is a success. You have grappled this guy. We don't want to hurt you. We just want to talk. What has Picano ever done for you? We've seen how he treats his allies. He looks around at all his dead friends. Says, you don't want to hurt me? No, not more than we have to. (laughs) And I guess we'll find out if Corgo eats him next time. (laughs) Thanks for listening to Broken Tusk Rising. You can help the podcast by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, by following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at The House of Bob, or by chatting with us on Discord, and most of all, by supporting us on Patreon. That's at patreon.com slash thehouseofbob. This show is possible due to all our patrons who get special zines, one-shots, and commentary. Art for this campaign is by Sean Makes, and art for social media is by Jeanette. Audio production and music are by me, Mike Hammock. Thanks again for listening, and roll on. Guys, do you want to stop this combat? We're still going here. What well, do you I think? think you could basically make this into two episodes. Yeah, we can try, try <laughs> to find a good place to split it somewhere. I think we're pretty close to done with this combat, so. Yeah, okay. All right, we'll just keep going. All right, as long as you're okay with that. Oh, my poor dog needs to walk, though. Oh, okay, well, anyway. You're such a dog killer, my God. Killing the wolf. <laughs> I'm walking your yeah, dog. You, better, you better edit this episode. You're going to be all over us. <laughs> 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 Can you finish this, please? Please finish this. The dog has to get walked. <laughs> man, man, this happening with Corgo while he's a giant is, you know, just an extra level. They fit so easy into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>